In today's video, I'll be giving you my 100 mile full review of this, the Adidas Adi Zero Adios 6, which might be the new all round running shoe king for 2022. Hello everyone, I'm Josh, a medical student and triathlete here in London. On this channel, we talk all things triathlon and running, whether those be vlogs, training tip videos or running shoe review videos just like this one today so if any of that sounds interesting to you please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and while you're down there consider hitting that like button as well because it really helps push this video through the youtube algorithm yes today we've got a super interesting shoe to talk about this one right here the adidas adi zero adios six you can see my first impressions video up in the corner but this I've run 100 miles in this shoe, so we're gonna go over some of the general specs, what I've been using this shoe for, then we'll talk, as always, about the upper, about the very interesting midsole in this shoe, and the outsole, before we kind of wrap up with a closing statements and a value proposition. So, let's jump straight into the review. So, just some quick stats about this shoe. This is the Adidas Adizero Adios. Six, quite different from the fours or the fives, but I think for the better, and you'll see why I think so as we go through this shoe. In my men's size nine, this weighs 235 grams. And it's kind of hard to understand what that means because that's just a weight. So I thought I would compare it to some other shoes that you might have worn or could be similarly used to this. So kind of similar shoes would be something like the Nike Pegasus 38s, which are 260 grams, so 26 more grams, and this one quite significantly heavier in that respect. Whereas things like the Nike Vaporfly are 190 grams, so the other side quite significantly lighter. Whereas the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro 2s, which you can see my full review up in the corner, they are 210 grams, so slightly lighter than this shoe. So this kind of falls right in the middle between those really fast, light racing shoes and the slightly heavier, more robust daily trainers. And I think that puts it in a really interesting position. In this shoe, we have 27 millimeters of foam in the heel and we have 19 millimeters of foam in the forefoot giving us an eight millimeter drop which is definitely noticeable however not too aggressive for the style of shoe i think this is going for when i really think adidas meant this as a more racing style flat kind of thing the modern racing flat i think is the way that i would describe it however i've used this for so many different types of runs now i've done everything from 400 meter repeats on the track with these up to half marathon long runs it really has been incredibly versatile whenever i'm trying to figure out which shoe to wear for a workout this one is one of the first ones i go to grab i've never had a problem with the weight and i know there was some discussion about that in in the last video never had a problem with the weight never had a problem i think it can basically do everything but now we've got that overview done let's talk the specifics of this shoe and let's start with the upper of this shoe because i think it is incredibly good i don't think i gave it enough credit in my first video here we have a mesh and a textile upper combination in the forefoot we have a nice amount of room it really isn't too narrow or too short i don't have a problem with the rubber coming over the front which i have done in some previous shoes especially from a company like nike it really is a really really appropriate toe box i must say and i love the mesh that comes over the toe box it's thin enough so that i can see my socks through it which is kind of the trend now when it comes to racing shoes, especially from a company like Adidas. However, it's not so thin that it doesn't provide any structure. And I think the, the amount of structure here is much more significant than some racing specific shoes. And I think that helps it when you want to run more regularly in it, especially for those long runs. We've got some really nice orange plastic detailing in the sides. It's not aggressive, but what it does do is add a lot of structure to this midfoot. So when you're doing up the laces, you really feel like you're locked in and it kind of pulls all the way down to the midsole of the shoe. I also think these suede pieces of fabric on the toe and around the kind of bottom of the laces 
add a little bit more structure as well. And I've never had a problem with them and I think they just really add a bit more structure and help to keep your foot in place, which I really like. And I have to say, it does look pretty cool. As for lockdown in this upper, I thought it was incredibly good. I really like the lacing system, the fact that we've got some extra eyelets on the sides as well as on the top to do a runner's knot, I thought were really nice, although I haven't had to use them because it's simply been that good. We also have some kind of plasticky material in and around these eyelets which links into the orange structural support. So whenever you're lacing yourself into this shoe, you really feel like when you pull those laces down, you're pulling right on the material all the way down to the midsole. So you feel super secure. You feel like you're almost kind of pushed down and glued to that midsole. As for the tongue in this shoe, we've got a semi-gusseted tongue, which is one of my favorite styles of tongue design when it comes to more up-tempo shoes. This is extremely similar to the tongue in the Adidas Adios Pro 2s um, because we've got a really thin material in it with just some sparing amount of padding on either side of the top of the foot. And I think that is absolutely perfect for the intended use of this shoe. It allows for a really nice amount of lockdown with those laces and I never felt like I could feel the laces, laces pressing or pushing on the top of my foot no matter how hard I cinch them down. And as we turn our attention to the back of this shoe, we've got a rather plush heel collar, I must say. I don't know why Adidas keep doing this weird bit of cushioning on the outside of the heel. I'm not sure as to the reason why, but there is a really good amount of padding in the heel of this shoe, kind of all the way through the back, and then it becomes more minimal the further we get up until the front of the heel collar, where it's basically non-existent again. And I feel like, you know, it's kind of, as I've said before, in between our racing shoes, which don't have almost any padding in the heels, and our max cushion or our daily trainers, which do have kind of padding all the way around there. But even without either of those two designs, I didn't find any heel slip in this. I feel my heel was super secure. I don't know if that's simply because the heel collar is quite good, or it might just be down to that excellent lacing system. Either way, the lockdown with the heel and the lacing combination was absolutely excellent. And having run in the wet British winter in this shoe, I can say that it doesn't absorb too much water. It really doesn't get heavy as you do with some shoes with more kind of fabric uppers. And when it's been a little bit nicer as it is outside today, the amount of ventilation in the forefoot, especially if the shoe has been really pleasant, so I have been getting super sweaty toes. Let's move on to the midsole of this shoe now, and it's possibly one of the most interesting parts of this shoe because it's a combination of some of Adidas's best technology, some fan favorites, you might call them. In this midsole, we have got, I'll turn it around this way to help you see, we've got a kind of front small layer of the Light Strike Pro foam, the same one that's in the Pro 2s, and then underneath, extending to the back of the foot, we've got the normal Light Strike, which is in those SL20s, which I've also done a video of. And then we also have the thing that I think I underestimated the most in the midsole of this shoe, turn it round again, is this torsion plate. It runs all the way from the kind of middle of the heel up to the midfoot, and then it splits and goes into two rods. I think they're calling them torsion rods, into the forefoot, kind of about an inch from the toe, from the end of those toes. So let's break each one of those down individually and then we can kind of talk about it as a package. Starting with the original Light Strike in the heel and underneath that Light Strike Pro, kind of cupping it on the sides. I think the Light Strike normal foam is absolutely excellent. It's nice and robust while being springy enough for more kind of high energy or high pace runs. You're not gonna be landing on this heel very much. And so I think a more robust and a slightly less performance enhanced foam is really good to use here as it both helps on cost of this shoe and it makes you really want to be landing on the forefoot of that shoe where this Light Strike Pro is packed in. And although it kind of looks like it's just this top layer, if we look at the bottom of this shoe, and I can't remember if I mentioned this in the first review, you can see that the majority of the forefoot all the way down to the sole is that Light Strike Pro material. You can tell it feels much, much lighter, much springier than the normal Light Strike, and it's coming through the outsole of this shoe. So that's an interesting thing. You get more than you bargained for, I think. And like I said, 
having Light Strike Pro in the forefoot really encourages you to be landing on the forefoot and at least on the midfoot. By doing that, you're really benefiting from the excellent energy return in the forefoot of this shoe. And when you do manage to land that again and again and again, you really feel the shoe gliding you through each stroke. It is an absolutely excellent combination, I think. And then we've got that torsion plate in the midfoot and the forefoot. And I think it adds, as you can see, a lot of rigidity. Yes, you are not getting a full length carbon plate as you would in some of the other racing shoes, although this is significantly cheaper than that. You are missing a little bit of a plate in the forefoot. But I mean, if you just look, I'm giving it quite a lot of welly right now. This torsion plate does not bend very much, and that's both good and bad. It definitely gives it a bit of a firmer right than some other shoes, especially compared to something like the SL20 or the Pros. However, I think it gives it a great snappy and responsive feel. That's why I felt so confident taking it to the track the other week and running 400s, just because I know if you can land on that forefoot, like I was saying, you're gonna get a lot of the snap from that Light Strike Pro and that torsion plate, and then you're absolutely flying. I think it's a great shoe, but I don't think that kind of snappiness and that responsiveness takes away from those long runs, because when you're taking it out on a long run, you can afford to land a little bit more on the midsole while also utilizing that Light Strike Pro foam, which really kind of cushions your foot nicely, so you don't even realize those miles ticking off. This is one of my favorite midsoles in any shoe. I think it's incredibly versatile, although I must admit it might not be for everyone, especially if you are a heel striker, you're unlikely to be using some of that lovely Light Strike Pro in the forefoot, so it is something to consider. However, for like, I don't know, 95%, 90% of runners, basically, most runners will love this shoe, in my opinion. It takes a little while to get used to that midsole, not, not really breaking it in, but just adapting to what is a multi-part midsole, whereas most have a single foam in. Um, but I'm in love with it, and I, and I grab it for long runs, for track workouts, for tempo runs, for hill reps, for almost everything that I can afford to run this shoe on. I've considered buying a second pair simply because of how much I love the midsole, so I'm not running in this one every day of the week. And finally, let's talk about the outsole of this shoe, and there's very little to talk about when it comes to the outsole here. And I think that's probably a good thing, because if you've got a lot to say about a running shoe outsole, that probably means it wasn't very good, whereas if it kind of works and you don't notice it too much, you don't have too much to say, and that's a good sign. And that is the case here. I've tried this in wet conditions, on pavement, on gravel through puddles, on grassy mud, everything basically. As you can see it is a little bit muddy at the moment um, and it's done all of those incredibly well. I haven't had a single problem when it comes to traction and I really don't think that I will because I've really put this shoe over 100 miles through its paces. As for wear, we've got a little bit of wear on the heel area of the rubber nun in the forefoot. Just a little bit of uh, rubber wear on the heel. However, it's very, very small. Just that very tiny colored top layer coming off. So I'm not worried about the wear on the outsole at all. The only tiny little downside of this shoe is that it does absolutely eat up small stones. The small slats here love to get little stones stuck in between them, so I come back and I'd say I have five or six, maybe maybe a dozen sometimes, tiny little stones, there's actually one still in there that I didn't get out, um, stuck in between those, and that is a little bit annoying, because when you run it does kind of make a little bit of a sound, but that's not that big of an issue, and it only happens if you're running over some very kind of small stone, light, loose gravel. I don't really think that's a massive problem with the outsole of this shoe. I think it's performed incredibly well, and I've got no worries there. Finally, let's talk about the value of this shoe. I think it's one of the best value propositions you can get on the market right now. You can pretty much use it for any type of run. Admittedly, you might not want to use it for your easy runs, but barring that, and I mean you still could use it, barring that you can use it for pretty much every single run you want to and it will never be a bad decision and there's not a lot of shoes on the market right now you can say that about. As for the wear over 100 miles I talked about a little bit of wear on the rear of the outsole and there's a tiny bit of creasing on the foam but I haven't noticed the difference and having run significantly more miles in a normal light stroke shoe I've got a good feeling that both the foams in this shoe are going to last a really really long time. I think they've got many more excellent miles to be running them before this shoe needs retiring. I think one 
one of the best signs for this shoe is that I keep reaching for it. No matter what type of run that I want to do, track workouts, tempo runs, long runs, you name it, this is the shoe that I want to be running in. And it is, like I said, difficult if I've run in it the day before, because I try not to run in my shoes two days in a row. So I'm then reaching for a sh my second choice of shoe at that point, and it really has almost made buy a second pair. So that should tell you how much I love this shoe. Admittedly, at 110 pounds, they aren't the cheapest trainer that you could buy. However, I think that they are regularly on sale. I picked this pair up for about 80 pounds, I think. And if you can get that, find a discount code, look on some outlet websites where they have maybe some of the older colorways for this version of the Adios. Um, then, you know, I think it's a great option. And even at that 110 pounds, I think it's a much better value position than some of the other running shoes on the market right now. So this really does get the seal of approval for me on pretty much every single point. I couldn't think of a better shoe. And it, I don't know what's to say, man. Adidas have absolutely nailed this one. I can highly recommend it. But that's it for this video. So I'm actually gonna go out for a run in this shoe just in a minute. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel hit that like button to help us out and push this video through that algorithm to reach more runners who might enjoy the adios six on screen now i'll put on one of my other favorite all-time running shoes and that's the saucony endorphin speed quite similar in this shoe uh, in a few ways so maybe i'll have to do a video on that at one point but either way i'll see you all in the next one